joined here by the general manager of the Sherwood Park Crusaders, Kyle Chase. And Kyle, it was uh, sort of a tough final series there, come out, win the first couple of games, and it uh, it took a turn for the worse, ultimately bowing out in six. Just give me some overall thoughts on, uh, on how that shook down. Well, essentially, I think in game one, we, we felt we deserved to win game one. Game two, Matt Berlin stole us a hockey game there, and, and in games three, four, and five, I don't think we, we had our legs underneath us, and, and you know, we... They took it to us, um, especially with their speed and skill, and, and they did a really good job against uh, against our team. Losing Reed Irwin was a big part on the back end. I mean, that hurt us a lot, and, uh, essentially. And and then in, I felt like in Game Six that that we played pretty well, and and uh, unfortunately didn't get it done in the end. Did you get the sense that it was uh, experience? Was it the way that they sort of suffocated the offense? What What did you think? What would you point to and say this is how Spruce ended up in the final? Well, I think it's both of those things where, you know, they they used speed. They used you know they even bring in a young guy like Edwards. They brought him in and just goes to show you where the game is at now. You don't need to be big and physical necessarily in the playoffs, but you got to have speed and skill and and you'd be able to transport pucks out of your end quickly. And I, f I feel like their experience did take over, especially when it came to a confidence point of view. And I think that when they when they got their first win, I think they put a shadow of doubt in, in our players' minds. And, and I said this before with Dave and, and, and yourself uh, in the past, is the road to the north goes through Spruce Grove. And anybody that doesn't think that is kidding themselves. And, and I wasn't saying that for, you know, as a, as, you know, semantics or a ploy. That was about. I believe that, and they they have a group of guys in there that believe they can win, and and they know how to win, and and that's something like. And we alluded to our players, no different than the you know than the old that everyone gets maybe a little tired of hearing of the Islanders and the Oilers, or the Oilers had to learn how to lose, and hopefully that's you know the shoes on the other foot next year. You got to be happy looking forward to next year, just in terms of number one gaining that experience. But I think we've talked before about maybe next year was more of the target year to make that run anyway, and now you get to do that with the experience of having gone to the North Final under your belt. Yeah, no, I'm, no question, Brendan. I think that's uh, you know for our group, that's how we have to look at it—the silver lining in a sense. At the beginning of the year, if we felt like we were going to finish first place. Uh, we probably wouldn't have said that in September, but you know, here we, here, here, there we were at the end of the year. We were in first place, and with that came a little bit of pressure, no question. But we also felt confident enough that we could make some noise in the playoffs. And and uh, you know, this year coming up, we've got some really good pieces to start with that maybe we didn't have in the beginning of last year. So uh, we feel like you know, we feel like we could certainly contend again next year. Uh, any roster moves that you're anticipating making? Are there any holes on the roster, particularly maybe those left by the 20-year-old uh, departures that you're looking at filling ahead of September? Yeah, I mean, we had a, unfortunately we had to give up two players in the in the uh, deal with Lloyd Minster Bobcats for for Irwin and, and Kaiser, and you know we end up losing. You know Kyle Fulton and Cameron Acoin, who are two really good players for us down the stretch, and you know, and Kyle stepped in in the playoffs and and played a big role. And you know, we dressed 11 and seven, 11 forwards and 7D, and he ate up some minutes. And Cameron Acoin is you know a really good two-way forward uh, for us this year. And you know, both are young guys, and they're 18-year-olds next year that are going to be a big part of the Lloyd Bobcats going forward. There's no question. And Nigel was adamant that he wanted those two guys, and he did a good job of you know keeping the you know, keeping strong to to his convictions and his in in asking for those two players. So he gets a he gets two really quality people and he gets two really good players. So uh, you know, good good for them. And you know, uh, unfortunately for us, we you know yeah you have to pay the piper when you make those trades. And finally, uh, not much rest for the wicked for you. Obviously, spring camp is already here, uh, just a couple days after you guys bow out of the playoffs. What are you looking for out of guys trying to crack a spot uh, on main camp, and then maybe the roster after that? Well, I think the, you know it goes back to what I was saying about speed and skill, and you know bringing in guys like Vince Scott, Riley Morgan, Nick Magus, guys like that, and Kevin Minock, and those guys are extremely skilled fast players. They they all skate well, and and those guys are are guys that are, you know that are going to be you know pieces that we're going to expect to step into our lineup you know pretty much immediately next year and be a factor and you know we've got a couple of pros prospects out east one in philadelphia one in montreal that we're going to bring in and have a look at as well and and uh, hopefully uh, a player out of st louis so you know we've got we've got some projects there as well that we're you know that we're thinking that if these guys come in they can be impact players immediately all right well i wish you congratulations on this season and good luck going forward thanks brennan appreciate all your help this year thank you